And I'm delighted that we've reached an agreement that should lead to new Saudi investment in and through Britain and procurement from new companies worth up to £65 billion, uh, virtually $100 billion, over the next 10 years, providing a vote of confidence in London as the leading financial centre in the world. Yeah. I would be remiss if I didn't say something about Brexit, because uh, we get asked about it all yeah. the time. We believe in um, British ingenuity, we believe in British innovation, we believe in British manufacturing, we believe in British technology, we believe in British economic policy. We have believed in Britain for 100 years, we will continue to believe in Britain for the next 100 years. We, we have been so, uh, very committed to our relationship with the United Kingdom, whether the United Kingdom is part of the EU or whether the United Kingdom is outside the EU. That's a business that, that you have to decide. But we will be with you, we will develop our relationship with you, and we believe that there will be tremendous opportunities for the United Kingdom post-Brexit uh, as a partner of ours in our implementation of Vision 2030. So thank you once again, of course, for the hospitality. Look forward to taking some questions. Thank you very much, Adol. I mean, everybody understands the right of, uh, of Saudi Arabia to protect uh, its, itself and, uh, and to protect its borders, uh, but that does not in any way inhibit us in the UK from raising our concerns about the humanitarian issues. Everybody wants to see an end uh, to, to this conflict. There's absolutely no doubt about that. Um, this is not a war that we wanted, nor a war that we sought. This was a war that was imposed on us. That's what we're trying to accomplish in Yemen, to prevent it from being taken over by a radical militia allied with Iran and Hezbollah. I don't think the people of this country actually fully understand yet what is happening in Saudi Arabia and the changes that are, that are happening and the fact that you know, women are now uh, uh, going to be able to drive cars, uh, that uh, you've got a, a, an empowerment of, uh, of people in Saudi Arabia, a change in the, uh, the way of life there, an economic change that uh, I think could be massively significant. And yes, it sounds kind of, uh, kind of crazy. Of course, you know, we, we take it for granted uh, that uh, there's, there's gender equality. But that hasn't been the way in, in Saudi Arabia. This is a big thing that's happening. It's a very important thing. And we want to uh, encourage the reforms of, uh, of the crown prince. And uh, that's why we think it's so important to try to work with uh, Saudi Arabia as they, as they advance this, this Vision 2030. 70% of our population is under the age of 30. They are highly educated. Half a million of them have studied at universities around the world, from Japan to the United States. They are well connected. They have hopes, they have dreams, they have ambitions, and they have energy. And our role as a government is to set the stage for them to be able to achieve what they set out to do and in the process enrich our country. This can only happen if we engage in a major reform effort, which is our Vision 2030. The objective is to diversify from oil, create, open up other areas for investment, whether it's recreation, mining, entertainment, a focus on technology, empower youth, empower women, turn our country into a normal country so that people can lead normal lives and realize their hopes, dreams, and ambitions, as I mentioned. Can you, can you imagine a female prime minister in, in Saudi Arabia one day at all? I, uh, we will see. We have... Why, why not? Um...